Today I'm going to give you the roadmap so that you can successfully hire a team of freelance developers to start building your AI application for you. So I've had this conversation with many clients that are trying to basically put an application or build some sort of automation for their business. Whether you're trying to leverage ChatGPT or Cloud, which again, their APIs, their models, they're super great. So that's definitely a good way to go. Or maybe you're trying to do something more complex like using an agent framework such as the popular crew ai or agency swarm or fight data or maybe you're in the complete opposite of the spectrum and you're trying to leverage no code solutions such as make.com or flowwise or n8n well you're going to get to a point where you're going to have to decide if you want to learn these technologies implement them yourself build them yourself or basically outsource the work now if you have a lot of time on your hands then sure i definitely encourage learning these skills getting better at them because you could honestly offer that as a service to a lot of different people and a lot of different businesses. But if you're already an established business, you're already making money and you can't afford to spend the time trying to learn this and implement this yourself, then these are the three main scenarios that I see during my one-on-one -on -one consultations. And depending on what your scenario is, I'm going to give you what I think is the best solution in order for you to start getting some really good clarity on what it's going to take in order to build this app or this AI automation that you need for your business. So let's say for this scenario, business owner number one, you have no technical background and you have no technical team currently working for your company. But because of other automations you've heard of or things you've seen on YouTube about how practical AI automations or AI applications can be, I definitely recommend that the best route is to find someone you like, someone you trust and book a consulting call. Whether it's AI or an automation, making any kind of software product is a very daunting task. So if you're able to talk to a professional that you know and that you can see has experience in the kind of thing you want to do, investing in that one hour call is going to answer a lot of your questions and it's going to give you a much clearer perspective on what you need to do next. Or let's say you fall in the category of business owner number two, where you have a little bit of a technical background, but you really don't have a technical team working in your company. If this is the case, while well, you would benefit from booking a consultation with a professional, Professional, I think the fact that you have a little bit of a technical background is going to give you some perspective on what the requirements are going to be. And I think if you spend some time, even with a chatbot like ChatGPT or Claude, you get a decent gauge on how complex the task is going to be relative to the skill that you already have. But for both business owner number one and business owner two, I definitely recommend spending a decent amount of time researching before you start trying to hire or before you even start interviewing any developers. Now, the last scenario is your business owner number three. You do have a technical team but they're at capacity, meaning that they're not able to take on more work because it's either outside of their expertise or again, they're just too busy with the other projects that they're providing for your business. In any case, I think it's the best scenario because you already have experience in working with and managing software developers. But even if you have an amazing technical team, I'm sure you realize from experience that in order to find these qualified individuals that were a great fit for the team and probably took a little bit more time and a little bit more resources than you wish it had. So these are the main concerns we need to address when it comes to hiring and interviewing developers. We want to know how many developers are going to be needed for the project. We want an approximation of the time it's going to take in order to complete the project. Obviously, we want to know how much money it's going to take. And also, we want to know the kind of experience that the developers that we're interviewing have. And really, it's going to come to this. Rather than trying to go off and hire a bunch of developers or trying to get the whole team together all at once, we're going to start with one developer. We're going to want that developer to complete an eight hour task. We want to have a set budget for that task. And we're also going to look for the specific experience that we want that developer for that task to have. We'll talk about these two in a second, but I know you might be wondering, Hector, I need more than one developer. I need a whole application. I need a whole system. One person's not going to be able to do it. That may be true. But again, after you spoke with that professional, or if you did some extensive research with some of your online tools like ChatGPT or Claude, or maybe just feedback from the current technical team that you have, you're going to find that the best solution to start building up a team is starting with a single developer that you know works well and can meet the expectations that you have. Now, for this one developer, we want to limit how much responsibility we assign to them right off the bat. So we're going to start with simply an eight hour task. Now, what I mean by an eight hour task is you want to look for someone to complete a single job for you. Whether that's a basic automation that could serve as a foundation for a more complex system that you have, or maybe you want them to build the skeleton for your application. Basically, in the conversations that you have, either with your technical team or the people you consult with, you want to try and figure out what would be reasonable to expect out of eight hours from a developer. And of course, you want to have a set budget for this specific task that you're looking to hire someone for. Being able to understand what reasonable budgets are in terms of the projects that you want done definitely takes some experience. It's definitely going to take some trial and error, 
But this way, because again, you're only hiring one developer, you're only looking to get them to complete a single task. Even if you end up hiring someone that wasn't a good fit for that task, well, you're basically going to cap your losses here by setting the budget on what you expect from them. Also, if you're using a tool like Upwork and let's say you set a budget that was too low, well, then more than likely nobody's going to apply for that job. And now we take a look at specific experience again from that consultation you would have had or from that research you would have done for that project that you want to complete this single task you want to be very granular you want to be very detailed for the kind of experience that you want this developer to have if you're using terms in your post such as full stack developer senior developer expert developer because the requirement is generic you're also going to get applicants that have a very generic set of skills when it comes to the people that apply for this role or for this task that you want them to complete you don't want to get a jack of all trades you want to get someone that is very good at a few set of things and then of course you want to look at their track record you want to look at their work history this is why i love upwork because in upwork when somebody applies to the job that you're hiring for you can see their proposal but also you can see a list of the previous jobs that they've completed so there you can make a judgment on whether the requirement that you're asking for in the job matches the work history because if you're looking for a java expert and then all you see in their work history is Python projects, well, more than likely, that's not going to be a good fit. And then, of course, you want to have a clear objective of what you want to be completed at the end of this task. What is the expected thing? What is the complete product that you expect a developer to finish at the end of this task? And just like that, if you're able to break down the task of hiring a team of developers into a lot of little tasks of hiring multiple developers for a very short time to build and complete very small chunks of that app or that service that you're trying to make, well, you're really setting yourself up to minimize the losses in case somebody that you hired doesn't work out. And also you minimize the risk of ending up with a project that is taking way too much time and it's already tens of thousands of dollars over budget along with a team that just isn't working very good together. And here I want to share with you the green flags and red flags that I recommend all of my clients to look for when they start hiring developers for their teams. So starting with the green flags, when you're interviewing the candidates, you wanna see if they're asking you a lot of questions. The reason why it's important is because they should have a lot of questions. It's not their project, they've never worked with you before, and if they really wanna do a good job working for you, they're gonna try their best, they're gonna put a lot of effort in trying to understand what it is that you want to accomplish with your project. The second one is, do they understand the end goal? This kind of ties in a little bit with the first one, but again, from that conversation that they're having with you, they should be very curious about what you're trying to accomplish just to make sure that their skill set aligns with the expectations that you have for them. And the last one I have that I think is super important, especially if you're trying to stay within a very specific budget, is how they're giving you time estimates for the work that you're recommending. Again, this is why breaking down the tasks that you want into a small task for a single developer to complete after you did the research, after you did the consultation, is super important. Because once you've gotten a good gauge on how long this should take, even if it's still an estimate, well, there's a big difference between people you've already consulted with, you've already gotten an estimate from different sources that should be eight hours, and then you have a conversation with someone and they tell you that it's gonna take two weeks or they tell you it's gonna take four months. Again, this goes back to the first green flag is they asked a lot of questions, they understood the goal, the clearer the gauge they have on the project, the more accurate they'll be able to give you an estimate in terms of the amount of time it's gonna take. And for a short task that you've already done the research on, they should be able to give you an estimate that's either in hours or days. Now, in terms of the red flags compared to the green flags is, yeah, a red flag is that they don't ask questions and they just sound either very blunt or very confident about the fact that they can complete the thing that you want them to do. Now, the other red flag is they're working on multiple projects at once. That's another one of the neat features of Upwork is that for a candidate that submits a proposal to you, you can actually see what current projects they have active now. Just like you can see past work history, just like you can see previous reviews, you can see projects that they have in progress now. And sometimes these red flags, they do come all at once. So if you're talking to someone, they're not asking you a lot of questions. They don't seem very curious about what you're trying to accomplish. And then you check in their current work history or you check in their profile, how many active projects they have they have something like five or ten then that might be a little bit of a warning sign to you that this individual might be trying to overcommit to multiple projects and not dedicating significant time to any one of them the next red flag is no clear expertise in their work history and what i mean by this is when you look through their work history maybe you see a ton of different projects but you can't get a good gauge on what their actual main skill set is maybe they have web development maybe they have python maybe they have java maybe they have databases now i'm not saying this is always a bad thing there's definitely very smart very talented developers out there but just like any other trade 
The greater your skill set, the more you can charge for those skills if you're very, very good at it. So just make sure to try to keep an eye on that. And the last red flag I have is they only give you estimates in terms of weeks or even months. For this scenario, this is one of the things that I constantly tell clients that it is a bit of a red flag. Again, because if you did your homework in terms of defining what the task is going to be, defining what the end goal is going to be, and you've had this conversation with a potential developer, and maybe you already saw some other red flags, maybe they weren't very engaged in the conversation, the fact that they're still giving you estimates that are in terms of weeks and months could be a sign that they're looking for the kind of projects that run a little bit longer than expected because i'm sure as you know the longer the contract is the more money you can get out of it hiring developers can definitely be a little bit intimidating but i think that with a little bit of research and some careful screening you can definitely get that product built out successfully i hope this was able to clear up some of those doubts that you have and if you have any questions i'm actually offering a free 30 minute consultation all you have to do is click the link in the description it'll take you to my calendar right here and you just have to pick one of the available slots that's on there Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.